Hello everybody, welcome to Drawing with Clifford. Today we're going to be doing the Year 7 Cape project, which is Joel Pinkman's Fond and Fancy. So, what you'll need, a pencil, a rubber, a sharpener, and a piece of A5 paper. Only when you're struggling, that's an A4 kind of half. So, just make sure you've got your original picture in front of you or somewhere close so you can see it. And just make sure you're nice and prepared. For example, I'm just going to quickly sharpen my pencil here. So. Before I start, I always need to make sure I do not do put too much pressure on my pencil. Just do nice, loose lines. Very gentle, very light. So if I make a mistake, I can fix it. Now, starting off with just more of like a boat kind of shape with what can only be described as a, um, probably a bit of a wonky um, bowler hat on top. Now, part of this basic shape looking back at the original picture and picking out any you know, rectangular shapes on the edge and a few lines so as you can see I'm going back and forth look at my picture making sure I'm including absolutely everything I can Inclu including any loose marks or any guidance now the great thing is I'm drawing this very lightly so if I make any mistakes I can just draw over the top of it and worst case I can rub it out As you can see, just now gently um, drawing any small bits of detail when I can see in the picture, including some of the creases of the wrapper. Now, this is probably the most complicated bit, so I'm going to start from the middle and work my way outwards, just so I don't feel like I'm squashing everything in. Break it down bit by bit and take your time with this. As you can see, I'm just drawing one at a time. Now, if you make a mistake, don't feel scared to draw over the top. That's why we make mistakes, to learn from them and fix them. Now, I'm starting to realize that oh, was a bit too wide, so let's bring it in a bit. Um, I can probably correct most of this with my tone later. Few little marks just to identify anything I may have done right or wrong. So, just before I start anything, I'm going to kind of practice my tone first. So, just remind you, I'm going to be able to create a light tone and a dark tone. Create dark tones, you put a lot more pressure on with the pencil and you put lines closer together. Whereas you create a light tone, you spread them out. Here you can see I was getting a bit silly. I want to make it as dark as my soul. So, quick example so we're going to do a 3d shape leave a nice negative space for the lightest parts that's where the lights reflected on top and as it gets lighter um, it's more spread out. and as it gets darker the lines are close together and a lot more pressure I don't feel scared to create a few extra layers on top as I said that's why we have the rubber so we can rub it out and blend it later you can see I'm using my finger now you can use a smudge stick or a cotton bud I'm just using my finger to save some time and create some really dark shadows of pressure. Now, I've always noticed that if it's light enough, so I'm just gonna move some light and bang, nice 3D um, sphere. So, now I'm gonna go back to my picture and use the same idea around it. So, we identify the darkest points first, use very tiny, gentle squibbles, just build up those lines bit by bit. I'm not gonna rely on any um, smudging or blending just yet, I'm just gonna identify what's dark and light. Identify what's going to be the light tone later and a big reflection. And I'm just going to build these lines up bit by bit. So, always remember to look back at your original picture, and this part does take time. So, as I've always told you before, don't rush and ruin it. Take your time and make sure it's perfect. identifying all my dark tones first just so I know where they're going to go. I'm trying to leave all my negative space alive. Here I've made a, I feel like I've made it a bit too dark so I'm just using the rubber. I'll just blend it in just to see how it's going to work. And it's 
already starting to look nice and 3D. So, once you're smudged, I say, don't ever feel like you can't um, go back and refine it. Keep building up those dark tones and build it up by layers. Now here I'm starting to realise I might have made it a bit too dark, so need a bit of blending. I just kind of, and sometimes rather than just erasing it, I just over exaggerate some of the other darker tones. You notice from all this um, blending. You know, remember to um, sharpen your pencil frequently, just so it doesn't end up too blunt and it ends up looking like a big grey cloud. Said, so, it's a stain drawing takes time. Now with the creases here, there's a lot of negative space and a lot of differentiated tone. So what I'm doing slowly, is building up those lines from the crease, working my way outwards, and any over exaggerated light tones, I'm going to use my rubber just to record them like it is if I had a white pencil. So take your time with this, do one at a time, don't try shading all at once. This is not colouring, it's building up tone bit by bit. You want to be very gentle. Each crease needs to make sure it's got its own different tonal range. And as I said before, always look back at the original source. Just had to have a quick minute to wash my hands because it's getting a bit uh, messy. Make sure if you do any smudging, if you do wash your hands, make sure you make that absolutely bone dry because you don't want to get any water on your pencil. Just mind you, these are very, very tiny, gentle scribbles being, being built up layer by layer. Look very carefully at my hand. The slowly, the smallest movements call these, call these marks. I've also got my pencil at an angle, so it's not hovering above the picture. That's not because I'm recording it, because I've got more of a more control of the longer my pencil is. So I'm just building up these extra dark tones. Continue to record some more of that um, texture as well. If there are any mistakes you make, you can use the rubber or you can blend them out like I'm doing now. As you can see, it's slightly becoming more 3D and more sustained. few lines here I think I've made a mistake on but you know what I'm gonna embrace it I'm gonna refine it a bit see if it works and actually I think it's starting to look quite good the great thing is this is not a, meant to be a carbon copy of the original image it's meant to be a pastiche so that means we can change it up a bit and combine our own ideas with it so using tone with a um, sorry create a tonal drawing from a painting is a pastiche in itself I'm just comparing the original I'm pretty happy with mine. Just going to make some large refinements to get those extra marks in there. You might be thinking, sir, that's finished. Let's leave it. Let's build up this shadow underneath. Every, every bit of detail we can get in really brings out the picture even something as small as a shadow in the background. See, I'm drawing and blending, taking it back and forth. Now, I've noticed I've made a massive mistake here. And I've completely forgot to build up tone on the, um, the white icing bit of the cake, but I'll go back to that in a second. Just want to finish this shadow here. Seem to be relying a lot on blending because I want the texture to look completely different 
to the um, cake itself. So the background needs to look. So the background needs to have more contrast in relation to the picture in front of it. So I'm going to make sure it's, it lies more on smudging. One mistake I've also made round the, on the um, round shape of the cake is I forgot to leave a white mark for the negative space. So I'm just creating that now, creating a darker background for this angle. Now, I have just realised I've made it a bit too dark, but it's not the end of the world. Let's just uh, darken a bit more at the top there. I'm using quite aggressive lines here. Now, all this is going to be smudged later, so not to worry. What I have noticed though is the um, the left side of the, the cake is a bit too dark, so it's going to be harder to smudge. So I might have to go back and tap with a rubber in a minute. I want, yeah, I want the background to look completely different to the cake, so I'm using longer lines and I'm going to smudge those in in a minute. Now, even though I've got that big dark mark behind the cake, I'm going to leave it because I actually kind of like it. It's, that's not an extra bit of shadow, it's just a, something I can fix later on when I come to painting it. But I've made a black and white copy to see if it looks similar. I've just realised I need to over exaggerate a little bit more of my dark tones on the cake. So I'm just going to do those now. It never hurts to get a, um, a black and white photocopy of the original image if you're trying to do a tonal drawing. Just to check, but always start with the colour one first. So, so I'm going to sign it. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'm done. So that's ready to be painted, and we'll give myself a treat. Just get a sweet stuff, and we'll go relax. Anyway, thank you very much, and good luck.